Hello everyone, I hope you are fine and from today I am going to make videos on the musculoskeletal physiotherapy as many of you were asking me to make the videos on the musculoskeletal physiotherapy that is why I am doing so and this video is going to be the first lecture of it and we are going to study the unit number one which is soft tissue injury repair and management. So now first of all you should know what is a soft tissue. It can be a nerve, a muscle, tendon, ligament or the fascia. In the first topic we will discuss about the soft tissue injury, then we will discuss about the repair and then in the last the management of the soft tissue injury by the physiotherapy. So this is going to be the first topic that the examples of the soft tissue lesions in which we will discuss about the musculoskeletal disorders. Now as you know from this term the musculoskeletal means muscles and skeleton. So we are going to discuss about the disorders of the muscles and skeleton. So the first definition is of the strain. Now what is a strain? A strain basically occurs when we overexert some soft tissue. Overexertion means that we are applying a large amount of the force on that soft tissue and this would result in the overstretching. So overexertion would cause the overstretching of the soft tissue and this overstretching is referred to as the overuse of the soft tissue. So this overuse is basically the strain. It means that when we are overexerting a soft tissue, so this would cause the overstretching of the soft tissue and this would result in the overuse of the soft tissue and this is basically the strain and this strain is less severe than the sprain why because in the strain we don't have any kind of tear of the fibers but in case of the sprain we do have the tear in the strain it is because of the slight and the repeated trauma to the soft tissue and this results in some degree of disruption of the muscular tendinous unit because the strain as we have discussed this is basically the overuse of the soft tissue and this overuse would result in some degree of the disruption of the muscular tendinous unit. The strain occurs in the muscles and the ligaments. Now what is sprain? So as we have discussed this sprain is severe as compared to the strain. So the sprain is because of the severe stress severe stretch or the tear of the soft tissue all right so when we apply severe stress severe stretch or if the soft tissue has teared so this is basically referred to as a sprain and the sprain can be of the joint capsule it is mainly as we have discussed in many of the cases that the sprain is specifically used for the ligaments but it is not restricted to the ligaments it can also occur in the tendons as well as in the muscles then we have the three degrees of the sprain and what are they the first degree is mild degree in which only the few fibers have teared then the second degree of the sprain is basically moderate in which we have the significant tearing of the fibers third degree of the sprain is severe in which the ligament is completely teared off ligament tendon or it can be muscle joint capsule so any of these uh, soft tissue can be completely teared up. So this is basically the third degree of the sprain. Now let's discuss about the dislocation and subluxation. So in the dislocation, as you know that the bone is completely displaced of the joint. For example, if this is the hip joint and this is the femur, the head of the femur, this is if you take it as a hip joint. If the bone is completely displaced of the joint, so this would definitely disturb the anatomy. And this disturb in the anatomy would cause significant damage and inflammation of the soft tissue surrounding it. And definitely it would cause the pain as well. You can see the pain in the dislocation. So this pain can cause the reflex muscle guarding. And this muscle guarding would cause the vascular and the metabolic changes. And this metabolic changes and the vascular changes or you can say the circulatory changes would cause the muscle spasm in turn. We will discuss this whole cycle in the later topics in great detail but here let us just understand that here in the dislocation the muscle spasm can also occur now the subluxation so subluxation is basically the incomplete or the partial dislocation it means that the bone would be still intact with the joint capsule and in this way if there is a partial dislocation so this would cause the trauma to the surrounding soft tissue in the dislocation there was a complete displacement of the bone from the joint capsule while in the subluxation there is partial or incomplete dislocation of the bone from the joint capsule. Then we have the muscle tendon rupture or tear. Now remember the two things under this. So if there is a partial rupture or tear of the muscle tendon, so this would cause the pain. 
when the muscle is stretched and contracted if the if there is partial rupture of the partial tear it means that few fibers if uh, have torn away so this is going to cause the pain if you're going to stretch that muscle or if you're going to contract that muscle so why is this so because let me show you here because for example if there is a rupture it means that few fibers are still in contact with the upper part of it and if you're going to contract that muscle or stretch that muscle so that muscle would be pulled against the injury and in this way this is going to cause the pain because the nerve fibers are going to be irritated but if there is a complete rupture or the tear so definitely it means that if this is a muscle and there is a complete tear of it it means that this upper part is no longer connected with the lower part so now if you're going to stretch or contract that muscle so this muscle uh, does not pull against the injury that is why it is not going to cause any pain then we have the tendinopathies and the tendinous lesion so basically this is the general term that is used to refer to the injury of the tendon by the mechanical loading now here in this category we are going to discuss about the following terms so first is the tenosynovitis so first of all in order to learn any terminology you must break down the term all right so here we can see and itis always refers to the inflammation. So the tino means tendon, sino means synovial membrane, and itis is an inflammation. So this is basically the inflammation of synovial membrane that covers the tendon. Then we have another terminology which is the tendonitis. So the term is telling you the itis is inflammation and the tendon means the tendon. So this is an inflammation of the tendon. And this inflammation of the tendon results in the scarring and the calcium deposition. So this calcium deposition when it occurs in the muscles or in the tendon, this would give us the appearance of a false bone. That is why we can call it the myositis ossificans. It means that in the muscle, we can see a false bone. Remember this thing that the myositis ossificans can be seen in what condition in the tendonitis then we have the tenovaginitis now what is tenovaginitis it is basically the inflammation of the tendon sheath it is a sheath that covers the tendon tendinosis and tendinosis is basically the degeneration of the tendon there is no inflammation as you cannot see any itis here so it means that it refers to only the degeneration of the tendon and why the, there is degeneration of the tendon because of the repetitive microtrauma now let us discuss about the synovitis so synovitis is the inflammation of the synovial membrane and definitely as you know this synovial membrane is responsible for the secretion of the synovial fluid so if there is inflammation of the synovial membrane there is excess of the secretion of the normal synovial fluid so this inflammation is because of the trauma or disease and this inflammation can result in the excess of the synovial fluid and now where in this synovitis can occur so synovitis can occur in the joint and in the tendon sheet because these are the locations where the synovial membrane are present. Then we have the heme arthrosis and the heme, heme means blood, arthrosis means joint. So it means that there is a bleeding into a joint and why there is a bleeding into a joint because of the severe trauma. That is what is a heme arthrosis. Then we have the ganglion and this name is basically a misnomer because it hasn't anything to do with the ganglion itself. What it is basically, it is the ballooning of the wall of the joint capsule. If this is a joint for example and this is a joint capsule, so that joint capsule would form a bulging. This ballooning can also occur in the tendon sheath. Now what are the causes of the ganglion? So it can occur after the trauma or it can occur in the patients with the rheumatoid arthritis. Then we have the bursitis. So it is the inflammation of bursa. The contusion. So the contusion is basically the bruising from the direct blow. Definitely when there is a direct blow, this would cause the capillary rupture. And when the capillaries have gone ruptured, this would cause the bleeding and the fluid would also leak from there and this would cause edema and of course there's also an inflammation so these are all the things that are basically contributing to the bruising and in turn we are calling it a contusion then we have the overuse syndrome which is also known by some other different names which are the cumulative trauma disorders or the repetitive strain injury and uh, you can remember them by this thing they have one thing in common is that in the overuse syndrome as you can remember from here that overuse then in the cumulative trauma disorders so these are the disorders that result from when the several traumas are added up then we have the repetitive strain injury 
so the repetitive strain injury is itself uh, telling you that it is because of the repetitive injury if we talk about these terminologies altogether so overuse syndrome is caused by the repeated submaximal overload or the frictional wear to a muscle or tendon and this would result in the inflammation and pain all right guys i hope this topic is clear to you in the next video we will discuss about the clinical conditions that result from the trauma and pathology and we will discuss about the severity of the tissue injury irritability of the tissues and many more so thank you until next time